there is a scenario where you can see crypto become a runaway train. It's just self-fulfilling. It eats itself. And, you know, you're you're not at 100,000, but you're 300 or 400,000. It's not my base case, but I can make that scenario up. That's not good for society, right? Society doesn't like all these new people are all, how did that guy get so rich and I'm not, right? It's what creates, it, it, it's what creates revolutions. It creates wars. It creates breakdown in civil society. And so we can have wealth transfers at a moderate pace but when they happen at rapid paces it, it really is often not good the ceo of galaxy digital mike novogratz has one of the most powerful voices in the ever-evolving world of cryptocurrencies novogratz's most recent prediction is intriguing since it comes at a time when the u.s financial system is struggling with rising debt and money printing in 2024 could bitcoin easily reach one hundred thousand dollars using scenarios in which cryptocurrency turns into a runaway train and drives bitcoin's value to absurd levels of three hundred thousand dollars or even four hundred thousand dollars per coin, Novogratz creates a remarkable image. Novogratz explains in a recent interview why 2024 will be remembered as a turning point in the long history of Bitcoin. This year is significant because Bitcoin establishes itself as the mainstay of the cryptocurrency ecosystem and surpasses its current status as a new conventional asset class. Additionally, Novogratz examined BlackRock's significant influence on the cryptocurrency industry, which is the largest asset manager globally. Novogratz highlights how blockchain technology and digital assets are becoming more widely recognized in the traditional banking industry by pointing to BlackRock's growing interest in Bitcoin. Watch to the very end of the video when Novogratz provides a unique look at the allocation of his own cryptocurrency holdings. Let's hear what he has to say. Yeah, I was actually just on uh, Bloomberg TV and they asked me about Sam Bankman fried I said, we went from a you know, a, a young kid in baggy Bermuda shorts and a shaggy haircut as our spokesman to, to Larry Fink all in one year, you know, the head of the biggest asset manager in the world. And it's a really a report card on financial stewardship, right? It is a hard asset, which really works in times of populism. That story resonated. It resonated with Larry Fink. He got orange pill. It resonated with lots of people. And as long as we have governments both here and abroad, that are spending more than they should, spending more than they tax, uh, and creating some form of inflation. It's not always, you know, CPI inflation. It's asset price inflation, right? The price of a house in America has doubled in 12 years. That's crazy. You're a young kid coming out of college, you want to buy a house. It's double what it was in 2012. And you're like, my salary's not double. And so pricing power gets eradicated, uh, eviscerated in time with with uh, printing too much money. And I think that story worked. And that Bitcoin rally gives air and oxygen to the rest of the crypto revolution, uh, which is still in its infancy, right? You know, the the Ethereum, you know, uh, platform, all Solana, all the other platforms who are really building block space to, to then build on top of. We haven't made that transition as a world yet, right? Like, so Bitcoin has a macro asset we get. It's a finished product. You don't need to do anything. But the second part of crypto, the fun part, the real revolutionary part, right? Decentralized stuff is, is just in its infancy. That platform is still used mostly for speculating, right? And then there's, you know, and, and I don't want to knock speculating, right? Macau is an amazing business. Vegas is an amazing business. Sports betting is an amazing business. The lottery is an amazing business. And so I would hope for my soul that I did spend the last, you know, 10 years of my life in the next 10 years working on a building as a giant casino. I, I would hope that, you know, we see more and more payments, that we see decentralized finance, we see decentralized ticketing and lots of stuff. But that's happening now. And this Bitcoin move gives oxygen and time for the rest of that stuff. And again, it's not just Larry at BlackRock. There's a whole team of people there that have been pushing way before he, you know, he was a skeptic originally, and then he yeah. finally, he got orange pill. And it was a, a group of people in the Bitcoin community that really worked on him. It was people in his own company, uh, but he got there, uh, most importantly. And I think he realizes, A, Bitcoin's a great asset, but BlackRock's a technology company. And if you see a future where lots of assets are in tokenized form, and you are a technology financial company, right? Financial services company that really leads with their tech, right? They have very small margins. They manage trillions of dollars. You got to be in that game. And so 
What we have seen is lots of investment banks and uh, commercial banks spending lots of time and money trying to figure out the tokenization game. And, you know, Larry just made a big jump into it. Um, and I think, you know, they, they plan on being a big player. Like, you know, listen, what, what you tokenize, right? If you tokenize a money market fund, that's pretty freaking cool, right? You're going to, I'm sure he's going to be in a, a wrestling match with the Fed uh, and the SEC on getting a money market fund tokenized. Uh, but if you get it tokenized and it gets approved, that's kind of like dollars in your pocket worth it, with interest. And you think about what the Federal Reserve does, right? We issue, there's a couple trillion dollars of cash in the system, right? You got cash in your pocket right now, probably. That's interest mm -hmm. free. So if you're carrying, you know, 500 bucks, you know, that should be earning 5%, it's earning zero. And so a stable coin or a tokenized fund that pays interest in lots of ways could replace cash. Now, are they, are the, are the authorities going to let that happen? All of a sudden, you'd have a run on all your commercial banks. Uh, I'm sorry, your regional banks uh, and and lots of banks, right? We have we leave our money in in bank deposits at zero half the time. And so there's lots of things to figure out in this process. But it's great that the biggest player in the world is in the middle of. It. In the second part of the video, Mike Novogratz offers his insightful perspective on Bitcoin's place in the context of populism and evolving financial paradigms. He makes a profound analogy between Bitcoin and a tangible asset, which resonates especially with younger generations that are about to receive large amounts of wealth from baby boomers. Novogratz emphasizes the need of diversity and cautious investing techniques while cautioning against excessive leverage. His thoughts on giving back to the cryptocurrency community Community provide complex perspectives on the legitimacy of digital assets. Let's hear more thoughts on these significant problems influencing the direction of finance. But I think that this populism story and Bitcoin being one hard asset and a hard asset that young people like. Baby boomers in America have $80 trillion of American wealth, right? It's over half of wealth is owned by baby boomers. Uh, they're going to die. You know, maybe some will eat healthy and die older than normal, but they're all gonna die. There's one certainty in life, you die. And that money is gonna get transitioned, transferred to a, a younger generation who is just much more comfortable with digital assets. And so we're even gonna have this secular shift. And so there are so many reasons you should have something in your portfolio, right? And it's again, you could have made the same argument if you believed in populism and, and, and debasing the currency, like you should have equities because equities go higher when currencies do poorly. You should have real estate. You should have gold and silver. So, you know, I wouldn't advocate to a, you know, 60 year old, you know, wealthy guy to put all his eggs in the crypto basket. Uh, it's a little bit more fun. <laughs> it is a lot more and fun. It, and it has been more profitable. But, you know, it's it's had a pretty big run. And, and, and I don't think the the returns can continue to compound the same way relative to everything else. But we do have a position now, right? We are on like, I remember one of one of my great personal like you know you think how did you contribute to the community because I think everybody I said this early on these are communities if you're in the Bitcoin community or the Ethereum community or the freaking Solana community or the Dogecoin community and you can either be a free rider then the community if everyone's a free rider the community doesn't go anywhere or you can do what you can to contribute and so because I'm a sales guy at heart you know my mom's a sales guy my brothers a, like we're storytellers me being a Bitcoin storyteller was how I contributed. But my second best contribution was I got Bitcoin put on Bloomberg. Pretty big one. Well, me and more had a couple of us. And I always thought that was important because it legitimized it as an asset. Right? We did the Bloomberg Galaxy Crypto Index, which never really took off like we, it was ahead of its time. But it was like, we're going to create the S&P for crypto. And so how do you legitimize this asset class? And that's done now. Sometimes everyone thinks they're geniuses because they were just lucky to be in the right seat at the right time. You know, entry point is really important, right? If you put all your wealth in at 70 and it goes to 50, you want to literally have a heart attack. Uh, and so you probably want to cost average in after a big run. You know, when it, when there's blood on the streets, when it was the Sam Bankman Freed month uh, and Bitcoin was trading under 20, 17, 16, there was so much deleveraging and blood on the streets. Then I would have said, Dude, you want a chance to get rich? Put a lot get in, it in here. there. Yeah. Buy, buy Solana. Eight dollar Solana. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But you know, one hundred and eighty dollars Solana. It's a different bet. It just is a different bet. Could Solana go to three hundred, four hundred, five? Of course it could. Uh, a lot has to go right for that to happen, but it certainly could. But that's from one eighty 
to 540 is 3x from 8 to 180 is 24x right and so entry points really important being sober about what volatility is is very important right these are 100 vol assets often like that does not warrant any leverage it warrants negative leverage yes exactly and so many people play in these markets and they just want more and more leverage and i'm like you know it's literally like telling a crackhead hey along with that crack why don't you take a little fentanyl you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, and now double that fentanyl each time you're yeah. gonna die you're gonna die at one point and so i i would just try to tell people to stay sober you know you just put a percent you're not putting 10 percent and so it's like buying a stock you buy a stock when you buy one percent of a stock it goes down you know 30 percent you lose 30 basis points you don't notice it as painfully right if you've got 10 percent of your net worth in and it goes down 30 percent that's three percent of your net worth if you got your whole net worth in you you, you want to jump out of a building um and so listen i i say one thing and i behave in a separate way i have a tremendous amount of net worth tied up in crypto and crypto assets Me too. um partly because i decided to make this chapter of my life all about crypto and crypto assets and partly because the third that's not tied up in crypto and crypto assets is still a pretty substantial sum of money you know a pretty safe uh and in pretty safe investments and so i can afford to 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 run the table or to try to run the table but if i didn't have that other other money i wouldn't have all my money in crypto just to be uh, clear you just said you have two-thirds of your assets in crypto or something crypto adjacent yeah that roughly correct? does that yes. include galaxy yes well, and to be fair, just to, to be really clear, all my crypto assets are in Galaxy. Right. I, I made that decision when we started in 2018. I didn't want to be, you know, making money here and having the company not make money. And so when I make money, when Galaxy makes money, I make money. And when it doesn't, I suffer. As we wrap up our exploration of the cryptocurrency landscape through the discerning eyes of Mike Novogratz, it's clear that his updated analysis provides a rich tapestry of insights into Bitcoin and the broader digital asset realm. Novogratz's adept comparison of Bitcoin to oxygen not only underscores its stability, but also emphasizes its foundational role in supporting the flourishing ecosystem of digital assets. If we dig a little more into Novogratz's insights, his analysis of BlackRock's calculated participation in the crypto cryptocurrency industry points to a significant move in the direction of mainstream acceptability. BlackRock's efforts, which include registering for a Bitcoin ETF and experimenting with tokenization, point to a rising assimilation of blockchain technology into traditional finance. This audacious move not only confirms the validity of cryptocurrencies, but also creates new possibilities for creative financial innovations and investment opportunities. Novogratz's findings are a beacon pointing the way towards a future where digital assets will be become even more important in transforming the global financial landscape as we manage the dynamic convergence of technology and finance. We can take advantage of blockchain technology's revolutionary potential and welcome a paradigm shift toward decentralized finance by keeping abreast of developments in the cryptocurrency industry. Come along as we continue to examine the changing stories and emerging opportunities in the cryptocurrency space. As we go out on a journey towards increased comprehension and empowerment in the constantly changing field of digital finance, Novogratz insightful assessments serve as our guide. Keep checking back for further information and in-depth interviews from the vanguard of the cryptocurrency movement.